When engaged in a dogfight, you will inevitably make mistakes, and as a result, your adversary will be able to take advantage of them. With a correctly timed reversal, the bandit will be able to gain the advantage and will start employing offensive BFM. When this happens, you are now the defender and will need to employ a defensive BFM to stay alive. In this video, we will tackle the mindset to go into a fight with, the subsequent goals when the advantage is lost, as well as some crucial defensive manoeuvres to use when the bandit is gaining an offensive position. Welcome to part 3 of the basic fighter manoeuvring episode where we'll take a look at defensive BFM. Let's get started. One of the most important parts of military flying is the mindset to enter any engagement with. Going into a fight with the mindset that you are better than the bandit will lead you into a false sense of security and you will be caught off guard. Always assume they are as good as, if not better than you, and be sure to fight to the very best of your ability in every encounter. It is also important to determine if an engagement is even worth entering, as the opponent may be at a significant advantage, be it having a more advanced aircraft, a larger number of air, ground and sea allied forces, or a speed or height advantage. It is much better to live to fight another day than commit to an engagement with little chance of survival. In DCS World this isn't an issue because you can just respawn, but in real life this is a key part of the fighter pilot's mindset. As soon as the advantage is lost, the defensive goals and objectives become the following. Defeat initial weapons employment, maneuver to deny your adversary your weapons employment zone, neutralize the fight and then transition to high aspect BFM. To execute the defensive objectives you must do the following. Maintain sight. You cannot fight what you can't see, so be ready to execute the lost sight game plan if you do. Max perform the aircraft, ensuring you do not become a target. Avoid the deck. In real life, this is the ground, and no matter how advanced your aircraft is, the ground has, and will continue to have, a perfect 100% win rate. Finally, never give up. If you give up, the bandit has already won. No matter how dire you think your chances are, having the mindset that you can still win no matter what will always give you a better chance than if you give up. Finally, there are the four defensive axioms when flying defensive BFM that you must always follow. Survive. Deny the opponent the nose on position called sensor nose. Defeat the opponent's shots. If the attacker is moving forward in the canopy towards the nose, then maintain the current pull to continue to bring them forward in the canopy. If the attacker is becoming thinner in profile, i.e. the target aspect is reducing, they are pulling lead for a gun's shot. Immediately increase the pull to hold the attacker's nose off. This may include bleeding the speed to the lower end of the rate band to momentarily increase the instantaneous turn rate. If they maintain the lead position, jink to defeat the gun's shot. If the attacker is within 60 degrees of the tail, are not moving forward in the canopy but are reducing in target aspect, then redefine the fight. This means transitioning into a nose low or nose high fight depending on your excess energy. High excess energy will dictate a nose high fight, whereas low excess energy will dictate a nose low fight. Line of sight rate is the rate at which the opponent is moving forward or aft in the canopy. Target aspect. This is the angle between the opponent's nose and you. A target aspect of zero is where the nose is pointing directly at you, and if they continue to pull past zero degrees target aspect, they are pulling lead for a gun's shot. Angle off tail. This is how close to the tail the bandit is, with zero degrees angle off tail being directly behind you. We will now take a look at the following defensive BFM manoeuvres. The bug out, the lost sight game plan, the reversal, the gun's defence, also referred to as a jink, defensive flat scissors, defensive rolling scissors, radius defence, and finally the ditch. Feel free to use the chapters below to skip ahead. During a dogfight, it may become apparent that there is an opportunity to escape. This is termed the bug out. By gaining speed and turning away from the bandit, you'll be able to escape towards friendly forces. If you enter a merge, you'll be able to bug out towards the target at 6 o'clock. Select maximum thrust or afterburner if fitted, turn across the tail and enter a dive while unloading to allow for the most acceleration. Keep sight at all times, dipping the wings if necessary, and do at most two check turns of 30 degrees so the bandit is not on your 6 o'clock. If you're successful with your bug out, you should be further than one nautical mile from the bandit with more than 90 degrees remaining on their turn. This will mean that they can no longer employ guns on you and you will now have sufficient rate of separation to escape. You'll need to visually assess this range as in combat you won't be able to know the exact distance to your target. If the escape was not successful, place the lift vector on the target and re-enter at maximum rate turn. Apply defensive BFM again until another opportunity arises to escape. 
If at any point you lose sight of the attacker, you must follow the lost sight game plan. If you know roughly where the attacker is, max perform the aircraft in that direction. Even if they aren't where you thought they were, this will make it harder for the opponent to shoot you down. If you're on the deck and lose sight of the attacker, reorient your lift vector regularly to stay unpredictable and defeat any potential gunshots. If you're high up, continue turning in the direction you were and enter a nose low manoeuvre all the way down to the deck. This will make spotting the attacker easier as the outline of their aircraft will be more visible against the sky. When flying in defensive BFM it may become apparent that the attacker will have an enclosed flight path overshoot. When this happens be ready to perform a reversal to flush the attacker out in front. When the opponent overshoots perform an unloaded 180 degree turn to place the lift vector back on the bandit. If successful you will have reversed the rolls and can employ offensive BFM as explained in part 2 of this episode. An enclosed flight path overshoot happens when there is greater than 60 degrees of target aspect i.e. looking at the top of the bandit's aircraft, there is a rapid line of sight rate flying through the extended at 6 o'clock and the defender must be able to visualise reversing inside the bandit's turn circle. If in any doubt do not reverse as this will present an easy snapshot to the bandit. We will now look at the gun's defence often referred to as a jink. When the bandit is in your control zone they will attempt to pull lead for a gun's shot. This is seen as the target aspect reducing until the nose is pointing straight at you. If you don't do something you'll quickly find out what a 30mm cannon round tastes like. The aim of this defence is to present a slim target profile which is difficult to hit and to defeat their computed lead angle requiring them to reposition for the new plane of motion. There are three methods to perform a jink with the last one being an unusual but very effective method. Method 1. Roll and pull nose high. First roll to place your inside wing on the target and pull hard upwards. The adversary will need to react quickly and roll to retake their shot. Method 2. Roll and pull nose low. Roll to place your outside wing on the target and pull hard downwards. Be careful of the deck when doing this as it will soon become a factor. Method 3. Roll and bunt. Roll to place your inside wing on the target and immediately push forward on the stick. This method is unique in that the attacker may be fooled into pitching nose up as you are rolling to place your lift vector upwards. Defensive flat scissors are exactly the same as offensive flat scissors as explained in my offensive BFM guide. To tell if you are winning or losing, reference the movement of the bandit relative to a point on the horizon. If they are moving forward relative to that point you are winning and if they are moving backward relative to that point you are losing. Slow down to best one circle speed to flush them out ahead. Redefining a defensive position into defensive rolling scissors is a good idea as the bandit has to solve multiple problems before taking a shot. When in a rolling scissors try to slow down as much as possible and orient your lift vector behind the bandit. This will flush them out ahead of you so be ready to take a snapshot as they do. The radius defence has the defender enter an oblique nose low manoeuvre to minimise the turn radius while gaining energy for a two circle fight on the deck. This enables the use of gravity or God's G to your advantage, pulling the nose around faster than the attacker. To enter a radius defence, roll so you are overbanked 45 degrees to the horizon with your lift vector facing down. Enter a lift limit pull at maximum thrust. This should force your bandit outside your bubble, allowing you to gain angles back. You will also displace your aircraft below the horizon enough for your bandit to choose between weapon employment or follow on BFM. With any luck they will overshoot out in front of you and you can take a snapshot. The ditch is a pure nose low manoeuvre to rapidly collapse your range to the bandit. Roll inverted and pull through. If you want to collapse range and force an overshoot, select idle throttle. Unless the bandit identifies this and also selects idle throttle, they will inevitably overshoot and you can then line up a gunshot. That concludes this part of the BFM episode and hopefully with all these tools for defensive BFM you'll be able to hold out against a bandit that is offensive long enough to force a mistake or to allow a friendly wingman to come to your rescue. We will look at section engage manoeuvring in a future series where multiple fighters engage multiple bandits and the different tactics that can be employed. For now that concludes the three part BFM episode on tactics and manoeuvring. I hope you enjoyed and if you did please feel free to subscribe and leave a like as it helps me out enormously. As with previous videos if I've made any mistakes be sure to let me know in the comments and I'll add any amendments to the video description. Thanks very much for watching.